Well, hello to you. So just want to say hi, really, and check in, see how you're doing in this extraordinary, intriguing, bizarre, community-spirited, hellish time. It sort of holds everything, doesn't it? Just, yeah, bizarre. Um, uh, yeah, so I want to say hi, hope you're doing okay, and share a couple of things that are on my heart, that are on my Miranda heart. <laughs> That's very good wordplay, isn't it? Just slightly dribbled there, not going to lie to you. Attractive. Um, so, I mean, you know, apologies about the look. We're all, we're all in this together. We're beyond, aren't we? It's fine. We can share fully now. I'm put on a lot of weight. Not that that's important or relevant right now, just just sharing, just apologies. Um, yeah, it puts everything in perspective, doesn't it? The things you worry about, that's for sure. So listen, there's a couple of things I wanted to share and sometimes I want to say so much good is gonna come from suffering. And if I do say that, then I just wanna say I'm not being trite because I am wholly aware and completely empathetic and sympathetic to the darkness and suffering that is going on out there in so many ways, physically, mentally, emotionally, societally, economically. I mean, it's a, it's a genuine crisis, of course. And yeah, I am fully aware of the darkness and holding that alongside the positivity I think though is important and where there is darkness there is light so I believe in hope and trust that there is goodness despite suffering but yeah I just wanted to be really clear that I'm not being naive to how much suffering there is we're all feeling it in our different ways uh, but in the spirit of hope why not focus on the light if we can if we're feeling able um, because I think it's better to believe that good will come from this than not to, even if it doesn't. But I think we're seeing that it, that things will change and be different forever in a good way. Environmentally, to start with, I feel like the world is taking a deep breath and the wildlife are getting a chance to be freer um, whilst we are holed up. So, yeah, so the things on my Miranda art uh, first, it's really nice to see on social media everybody wanting to do their bit, uh, wanting to be part of something big, bigger, wanting to have a purpose, sharing. Um, so many people in the healthcare industry giving free content, just incredible. And that makes me really happy because one of my passions is to really encourage people to be who they're made to be and follow their their heart and their purpose because we all have a unique purpose and it's so easy to get stuck in kind of societal and cultural and parental and peer pressure um, pressure to to have a certain job, to earn a certain amount of money, to get a mortgage by this time, to by this age, you know, all this basically bullshit, all these rules that have been conjured up but are, 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 you know, shouldn't exist. It's, we listen to who we are and what what we want to follow and what, what our purpose is and why we want to do things. So I think it's definitely a time in our isolation to get still and look inwards. And, you know, without navel gazing, always good comes from that. Have you seen the Dave Hollis quote on social media? It's brilliant. He says, in the rush to return to normal, use this time to consider which parts of normal are worth rushing back to. Is dropping the mic still a thing? That's what that was. I don't know, I'm 47, I'm very old, I have no idea. Um, but yeah, the rush to return to normal, because there is a sense of like, I don't want it to, uh, I want it to go back to normal, I can't bear it. Actually, take a breath, use the time to consider which parts of normal are worth rushing back to. You know, are, are there circumstances in your life from relationships to jobs? that you think, do you know, I just haven't been happy or I'm just really worn out. What can I change so that I've got energy to give to the world and follow my heart's desire for what I want to change, what effect I want with my wild and precious life, to quote the Mary Oliver poem. Um, look up Mary Oliver this time, very inspiring, as well as John O'Donoghue. Been reading both their poems, amazing. Um, 
so yeah, that was the first thing that was on my heart to say that, yeah, think about following your purpose and what you want to do with your wild and precious life and maybe make some changes. Um, to, uh, I am very lucky to have a job that I love and I was able to follow my heart. And one of the things that I love about my job is that I have an online shop. This isn't a promotion, by the way, this is getting to something called the Miranda Shop dot com sells in fact i'm wearing one of the products now a pajama top called bring on the breast clap with the added weight gain the breasticles do a significant clap now thank you you're welcome for that image um oh horrific uh, apologies <laughs> as if things aren't bad enough miranda i hear you say um so yeah it sells these pajama tops um, cosy things from socks to hot water bottle covers to sweatshirts and then there's t-shirts, there's mugs, um, cushions, did I already say that? This feels like a quiz game. Um, pens, stationery, stuff like that. And I'm fully aware the other thing that's on my heart, the second thing, out of three, don't worry this won't go on too long, but I do like to ramble. Uh, the second thing is small businesses. Obviously, as somebody who's self-employed myself, I'm wholly aware of, uh, and who's passionate about people following their purpose, I'm aware of small businesses struggling and that breaks my heart. So, to my, my other purposes to love is to bring joy and coziness to people. So, the shop brings joy and coziness, I hope, in its products. Uh, there's a small business called Jigsaw that distributes it and runs the shop. And my third thing that's on my heart is raising awareness of chronic illness during this time. So there are two charities that I just want to draw your attention to um, and tell you a bit about chronic illness. So those three things coming together, if anyone wants to go to themanshop.com and buy something, you'll be supporting Jigsaw in a small business. So you'll be supporting self-employed people. Um, having some fun and some coziness yourself, but also the any revenue that I receive in the lockdown, so certainly in April and May, and then we don't know how long it's going to go on, but for April and May, whatever happens, all my revenue I shall donate to one of these charities that I've found. So do you see, I haven't explained that very clearly, have I? Uh, you've got nothing else to do except for watch this rambling video. Um, so yes, what, what, supporting small businesses, supporting your purpose. So my purpose is trying to spread a joy and encouragement and coziness where I can and a raise awareness of chronic illness. So they've all come together in that thing. So the randashop.com has got some products and we're going to try and come up with some new ones as well. Um, new products this summer, we're thinking about a... No, I'm not going to tell you actually, I don't think I'm allowed yet. Anyway, we're going, we're going to grow it so that hopefully any income I get from it goes to the charity. So it's all a win, 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 win. So if you can afford to, and you can think of someone to give it to, or you want a product for yourself, then that's what I'm doing. Um, I'm also going to read, because there isn't an audiobook version, uh, The Girl with a Lost Smile, my kid's book. I'm going to read that. I don't know on what platform yet. Maybe Instagram Live? Do a live. Uh, I'll, I'll keep you informed about that. But I thought maybe bedtime reading for kids and adults. And that could be quite jolly and cosy. Jolly and cosy, you see. Also wanted to remind you of this. Miranda's Daily Dose is such fun. All my proceeds for that go to Comic Relief. And it has something that you can do every day that's silly and fun um, and gentle. But you need to modify it for being inside. Um, today's, the clocks must have recently gone forward, so, indeed they have, uh, do the time warp from the Rocky Horror Show, put it on, do the dance, dance into the freedom of spring and those longer nights ahead. You see, this is the kind of beauty and jollity you'll get from this book. Um, and the other thing in my work that I wanted to mention now is, let's not forget this. This was a fitness DVD that I brought out in 2013 uh, that I'm actually really proud of because it's about 20 minutes, half an hour, I think, of sketches around exercise. And then it's a genuine workout programme, but it's really fun and really silly. But 
um, supported and uh, taught through by me doing low intensity and by a fitness trainer doing high intensity. So it's completely works. It's an actual routine. Um, and you get, you get Tom Ellis doing some lunges and uh, Sarah Hadlin doing high intensity. Um, and a sketch with some people. Yeah, so if you want to keep fit in a fun way, try that. So uh, that's some of my purpose stuff for you in this time. Finally, my third prong. Good word, a prong. Not as good as plunge, obviously. Um, chronic illness. So I think another good thing that's gonna come from this time is that people ha are going to become aware of what it is like to live with long-term chronic illness. Illnesses like ME, like chronic fatigue syndrome, um, there's something called POTS, postural um, tachycardia syndrome, oh dear, where you stand up and your heart rate and your blood pressure don't quite work, your autonomic nervous system don't quite work, so often people can't stand because um, they're faint, real weakness, real fatigue, um, often end up in a wheelchair, um, often happens to young people who have to miss school, etc., become bed bound, chronic pain, um, hypermobility, connective joint issues, there are loads that don't have an understandable, um, easy to, yeah, understandable uh, diagnosis like cancer, like diabetes, like heart problems. Um, and these people are housebound and in isolation as part of their daily life. Um, my story in this is not relevant or important right now because the coronavirus is the important thing. I don't want to be a headline, but I will just say that I get it. I have had experience in my life of chronic illness. And one of the worst things about it is it being misunderstood. The other thing that's really tough is the level of isolation of it um, because people become very, very limited in yeah, I mean, completely housebound. But with the longevity, I think, even if there is initial sympathy or attempts at empathy, uh, people kind of forget, I think. Uh, understandably, this is no no kind of doing down of anyone. Um, but I think it's quite... I, I've spoken to a few people who have found the jokes about quarantine, which are important. I mean, this is where the... British are fantastic in particular the jokes going around that are fantastic and important um, but I think it's quite tough for those who've been housebound for years and years and years because they've just been alone with it perhaps one or two family members or one or two friends have tried to understand and, and help care for them but this is their daily life and suddenly everyone's sort of complaining about it for two weeks or two months and making jokes about it so yeah, I think these illnesses really need to understand more. I remember in the 80s, um, I know I, do, I just don't look as old as I am. Can you believe I was alive in the 80s? Um, people talked about ME as a sort of yuppie flu, you know, it was just sort of moaning. But it is, you know, it's an illness and it's serious and completely disabling and debilitating and means people can't follow their heart's desire and do what they want to do. And there's, I think the thing about chronic illness is people say there's a daily grief to it. There's a daily sense of disappointment. So all that you're feeling now, if you haven't experienced chronic illness, of the disappointment of, of all that you're missing out on because of the lockdown is what people with chronic illness deal with every day. Every day there's something to miss. Every day there's something you want to do that you can't. Um, every day there's isolation and loneliness. Every day there's a feeling of when's it gonna end? I think that's another thing that's really important and that people can relate to now is oh if i it would be manageable if i had a, an end date well chronic illness doesn't have an end date there's no kind of clear management strategy it's not like when you break a leg and they say okay you need to be on crutches for six weeks then you need to rehab for six weeks and you you can go okay i can dig in for that with chronic illness it's an endless um battle i suppose or an endless attempt to accept a different life to use to, to the one you so desire so yeah I just really hope that after this people start to look out or for those who might be suffering 
could maybe go and sit with them, listen, chat. Um, when fatigue is part of things, then often you've got a very small window in which to, to socialise, to chat, because it wears you out. But um, yeah, just I think just more understanding and ways for people to live as much of a life as they can, despite their condition to be really encouraged and supported and loved through it, um, visited, what, what, what can they, what they can, can they do in terms of their purpose and their heart? What, uh, can they be helped somehow to, to, if they can't walk to maybe would someone drive them to see a view, you know, it just needs to be more recognized, I think. And, uh, these are the charities that I came across. There are so many, if you, if you know people with ME or don't understand ME and chronic fatigue, there's, um, of which so many people suffer, it's crazy. Um, there's the ME Association and Action for ME, so there might be stuff on their websites. But I came across in my research on this, so, uh, a charity called Astrid, A-S-T-R-I-I-D. And they say, no, I'm reading my computer, bear with. Astrid's mission is to help people with long-term conditions find meaningful work. Boom. Um, yeah, so, I mean, it's got a whole lot of things on the website. But as they say, employment provides routine, a sense of normality, challenges and rewards. And when approached correctly, it can also facilitate a greater sense of well-being. Well, I'm sure those of you in lockdown now are probably thinking, yeah, I really miss my challenges, my rewards, my routine. That's what chronic illness, people with chronic illness live with all the time. Uh, the other one, so I'm going to be donating to them. I might get in touch with them. I haven't, I haven't told them about this, but I um, want to find out more about the work. And the other one is CISFA. It's, I've made it sound more complicated than it is. C-I-S-F-A, UK. C-I-S-F-A, UK, dot com. Um, they say it is suggested that one in 10 families will be diagnosed with chronic illness. We provide an ear and a voice for the invisible. Hmm, gonna cry. We recognize the physical whilst supporting the invisible. Um, so they have online groups, they have arranging buddies for hospital visits, they have sending care packages, um, and the organisation is run by people suffering with chronic illness themselves. So they understand and they know what to do. Um, it doesn't matter what condition we, you have, we aim to help everyone. So, and, and they talk about how um, they're working with people whose conditions last longer than three to six months, um, possibly forever, and are incurable. Fibromyalgia, they mentioned, that's one that people suffer from a lot, chronic migraines, um, and then including uh, cancer, heart failure, etc. So yes, if CISFA, C-I-S-F-A UK, I will be donating to, and Astrid, A-S-T-R-I-I-D, in case you just want to read more about them. Um, if you go to themarandshop.com, all my revenue from April and May, and then I'll assess afterwards, will go to that. Um, there are also, obviously, um, amazing charities specifically around the coronavirus. I mentioned something on social media recently about the National Emergencies Trust, where you can uh, text, five, uh, text NET, N-E-T, to 70141, and you denote five pounds to help um, the nation, um, the nation's vulnerable and most in need is just literally a pot of cash to support via trusted tra charities and organisations, so provide support for people in domestic crisis and yeah, the Duke of Cambridge said that he dreaded the day when the trust would actually be operational because it would show that we're in a dire situation and indeed here we are. So that's a way that if you want to support any charities that's a really good one. So those are the three things that were on my heart. Have a reflect inwards of what you don't want to go back to after this crisis. Um, thinking about your purpose and what you really want to do with your life. Um, well, I've lost track now of what 
I think that was sort of all in one and two, wasn't it? Um, my my thing about the Miranda shop and what, what I was going to do with it uh, and the work that I love to put out and why I do and chronic illness raising awareness of. So blimey, we've got to 20 minutes, folks. Are you still with me? Is anybody still there? I'll probably do some shorter chats about chronic illness as well. I just want to keep raising awareness of it because I say I have had experience of it and it is not pleasant. Um, but to all those who are suffering from it and suffering generally in this time, from my experience, I really do think that the people who suffer and listen to the suffering and listen to what it's telling you and really sit with it are so courageous, just so strong and a kind of wisdom, empathy and kindness and a sense of perspective about the world that is very loving and giving comes from that. I think the people who really suffer probably end up being the most empathetic, I suspect. Um, so there's always something you can do in these times. There's always a way to find the light. And uh, I hope you manage to do that um, in silly ways, in difficult ways of addressing your fears, addressing what's going on, having to sit with real darkness and um, difficulty in whatever, whatever ways. But I hope you manage to have fun every day. I hope you manage to have people and connection in whatever way you can. And yeah, sending all my love and apologies about the rambling, arming message. Bye, love you, bye.